What do you think of the push-pull method? Okay, you're referring to um, the fact that a lot of bodybuilders group their muscle of their body parts um, in what they call push-pull. So for example, a tricep exercise would be considered a push, mm -hmm. and a chest exercise would be considered a push. So they'll combine those two pushing movements in one workout. And curls, they would call a pulling exercise, and rowing, or back, they would call pulling, so they would combine their back exercises with their bicep exercises. Um, and that's a very common thing referred to as push-pull. But it doesn't make any sense. And the first thing I'll tell you is that all muscles pull, no muscles push, which means that you have to ask yourself, why does this look like I'm pushing? Well, it looks like I'm pushing because this thing is getting farther away from me, right? But what's causing that to happen is the pulling of the tricep, right? The, the, the mm -hmm. tricep is attached right here. So it is actually pulling, all muscles contract by pulling the insertion toward the origin and they create skeletal movement. Mm -hmm. So it's very uh, deceiving, the idea of pushing pull. For example, let's just say that I'm going to do a flat dumbbell press right? And we typically think of this as a pushing movement. But the only reason that we think of it as a pushing movement is because my movement is going forward and the weight is in front of my elbow. Okay, but what if you had no form at all? Right? And you only had an upper arm bone and you could somehow attach, let's say a rope with a cable right here and the cable hung down, mm -hmm. right? Now that same humeral movement would be called pulling because the weight is behind me, mm -hmm. not in front of me. You would say, pull that weight up. So it's ambiguous, right? The pectoral muscle is contracting, it's pulling the insertion toward the origin. And so that's the first problem with this idea of pushing and pulling. The second problem is that the push-pull method is based partly in this ridiculous notion that if you're doing your chest, you're also engaging your triceps. And so they're already fatigued. Mm -hmm. And so since they're already fatigued, you might as well finish them off by doing more tricep exercises. Same with the, with the back and the biceps. If I'm doing my back muscles, I'm already engaging my biceps. And so therefore, I might as well also finish them off. Well, there's all kinds of things wrong with that logic. First of all, if you're doing chest right, you're not going to be engaging your triceps very much. If you're doing your back correctly, you're not going to be using your biceps very much. Okay, but let me give you another sort of a ridiculous thing. Let's just say I'm doing a dumbbell press. As long as this forearm stays vertical, then neither my bicep nor my tricep are actually working, right? Because my bicep and the tricep are controlling the neutral lever and the neutral lever is unloaded. But if I bring these in, inside my elbow joint, I'm engaging my triceps. If I bring it out, I'm engaging my biceps, right? So I can literally do something like this and have more bicep engagement than tricep engagement, mm -hmm. right? Now, when you're doing a bench press, right? There's, there's, because you're pushing from the shoulder joint, you're pushing sort of in a linear direction outward. If you put oil on that bar, you would see your hands sliding outward, which is evidence that you're actually pushing outward. You're not actually pulling toward the center the way you would with dumbbells. Mm -hmm. Right, so that means you're creating friction force against the bar, and that's engaging your triceps. But even if you think about that and say, okay, well, yeah, so you've engaged your triceps because you were bench pressing, which is not the best exercise for the pecs. Um, now that your triceps are fatigued, is it really wise to work them when they're fatigued? Wouldn't it be more productive to work them tomorrow when they're fresh? I believe it would be. Why work a muscle when it's already fatigued? Right? And by the way, it's fatigued in a way that isn't maximally productive. Mm -hmm. Is it productive a little bit? Yes. If you do bench press, you will have some degree of development in your triceps. But you won't have maximum development in your triceps. Because, because the participation of the triceps during a bench press is much less than it would be on a dedicated exercise. Right? So you're better off working your chest without exercises that involve the triceps and you're better off using back muscles that don't engage the biceps. And that's easily explained in my book by just making sure that the secondary lever of the chest and of the back is neutral the entire time, 
Okay, but getting back to this idea of push-pull, um, you could ask yourself, well then, if push-pull isn't a good method, what would be a better method? Well, for starters, we have to understand about something called reciprocal innervation. Reciprocal innervation means that you cannot maximally engage two muscles that move a, a particular limb in, in opposite directions. So for example, the bicep moves my forearm this way, the tricep moves that same limb, limb in the other direction. Mm -hmm. Those are antagonist muscles. They oppose each other. You cannot load your bicep and simultaneously load your tricep. You cannot load your tricep and simultaneously load your bicep because the central nervous system will cause the non-working muscle to shut off completely. It does so by sending what's called a relaxation synapse to that muscle, telling it to not interfere with the muscle that's on the other side working. This is how we are coordinated. This is how we're able to do things without getting in our own way, without mm -hmm. muscles impeding the function of the opposing muscle. This is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful system. That means that at all times, any times that we are engaging a particular muscle, something else is being shut off to allow that to happen fluidly without interference. Okay? But that same system has to be used productively and can be used productively when we do weight training. So when you're doing biceps, your tricep is completely shutting off, which means it is fully recovering from a set you might have done for the tricep just before. Mm -hmm. What a perfect opportunity. Right? So if you do bicep and tricep back and forth in the same workout, you're getting the benefit of that shutting off recuperation. Right? Perfect. That's much better than doing chest and triceps. It's also better to do bicep and tricep in the same day because it's better to have a full arm pump rather than just a tricep pump today and a, and a bicep pump tomorrow. Right? Same is true for quads and hamstrings. You're better off supersetting back and forth. Hamstrings, quads, hamstrings, quads, bicep, tricep, chest back, chest back. Or maybe not supersetting, but just do your chest and then do your back. Do your biceps and then do your triceps. Both do your, work. They both work. But, but that is a much better way to group the muscles than it is to group them according to what you think is a push-pull. Thank you very much. My pleasure as always.